There are some good news sources out there if you just know where to look for them. Thomas Lifson pointed this out just the other day when he talked about a website in Chicago called CWB Chicago. We use it here once in a while, but they did a story the other day that was just fantastic. Jesse Jackson was talking about criminal justice reform. He said, there are 19 people who are in Chicago jails because they can't bail out for $100. Well, turns out that wasn't true. Flat out wasn't true. The people he he was talking about, they're in jail not because they couldn't make the $100 bail, but because they were out on jail and they violated the conditions of jail, or they're out on probation and they violated the conditions of that. They're in jail for damn good reason. But there's Jesse Jackson saying it, and the entire Chicago media took it hook, line, and sinker. One of the big papers out there wrote a big editorial about it. You know, let's let these guys out for Christmas, y'all. Okay, so, and I mean, this was, I mean, the only thing these guys did, I, I don't want to trivialize what they did, but they obeyed my first and only rule of journalism. If your mother says she loves you, check it out. So this is a good I mean, if you lived in Chicago, you'd have to check into this website every day. And by the way, the other good one in Chicago, every city should have two of these websites just like this. There's a, there's a cop website called Second City Cop, another great website where you can figure out the enormous gap between what you see in the paper and what really happened. Because it's a lot of cops that post stuff there. Uh, anyway, why don't we go back to CWB Chicago Uh, for another story that Chicago media just totally blew off, just didn't give us an idea what was going on. And and, and here's the story. In Chicago, we had a large group of 50 to 100 black people. Now, every once in a while, every once in a while, CWB will tell us the fellas are responsible for this violence. I'm not sure if they did that in this story or not, but I wish they had. So that's the one thing they got to work on. But they did do a story about a large group of fellas on Michigan Avenue. This is a high rent, nice district served by public transportation. All the fellas are doing it regularly now, coming up from the south side and just rampaging through the through the magnificent mile. And uh, and the cops and the people who live there and the people who own property there, the people who shop there especially the property owners and business owners, they're terrified that the word's going to get out that their shoppers are not safe anymore. But the word is getting out. Anyway, so we got uh, uh, first they first getting off of the train. When the fellas got off the train, they started creating all sorts of havoc. Then they went up to McDonald's where they had a big old fight, air quotes, large group of large episode of black mob violence. One of the local aldermen up there, he tweeted at quarter to eight that the water tower will be closing at eight o'clock tonight due to mob action by large crowds of juveniles. Anything else you want to tell us about that, Brian Hopkins? Hmm. I mean, one thing about Chicago, nobody's shy in Chicago about uh, talking about all this white racism against uh, black people. Nobody. I mean, that's a thing. I mean, that just it's 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 kind of in the air up there. It's in the news. It's on their NPR. It's in their local. It's on the editorial pages. But you get hundreds and hundreds of black people rampaging through this white neighborhood of Chicago, causing all sorts of damage. And everybody all of a sudden turns colorblind. I wonder why that is, Mr. Alderman Hopkins. Anyway, so they went to McDonald's. And where'd they go? They went to another place nearby McDonald's um, called the H&M Store. They reported being struck by a large number of shoplifters. And the McDonald's, again, reported being overrun by the mob. Then, when they finally kind of got herded back to the Red Line platform, remember, nobody's going to jail here. In Chicago, they're bragging about how few people they have in their jail. They have, last I checked, they had fewer than 6,000. Please, sir, I want some more. And that is good because that's a record low number of people in jail. Message, you're not going to jail in Chicago because we believe in criminal justice reform. And we know that sending you to jail for call, for committing a crime causes crime. It's kind of a quantum physics thing, right? It's like you do something and it has in the future, 
and it rebounds to something that happened in the past, yeah, if you don't understand it, that shows, and if you're not confused, that shows you do not understand the situation. Anyway, so the, the paper uh, the, they just went on and on talking about who they beat up, what kind of property they destroyed, how much stuff they stole, and how the train couldn't pull out of the station because people were rocking the train from side to side. Not much video, but we do have a little bit of video uh, from the people in the train who had, they had just kind of herded into the train. Hey, what's up, my brothers? That's some good singing. That's some good dancing, too. A nice hat. Did you get that up at the H&M clothing store? I'm not allowed to ask that question. I'm not allowed to wonder why you're up there creating all sorts of violence and mayhem on white people and Asian people just while you shriek in ecstasy as it happens. Because noticing this amount of violence as a black thing in Chicago, I mean, that makes the black kids angry. Hey, 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 